This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and I recently received a couple of AM radios in the in the mail from one of my YouTube subscribers, and uh, thank you very much for those. They're very much appreciated, and we'll have some fun with them. Radio number one is this solid state GE AM set from. Oh, probably the late 60s. Maybe we'll maybe we'll know more once I pull the back off. Let's see what happens. And once we jiggled our plug in the outlet, it plays, but you can tell that it has a lot of static. That's it with it all the way down. Let's open this up and see what's going on with it. If this was a tube set, I'd say that the static was the beginning signs of silver migration disease in the IF transformers, but that's generally not a problem with solid state sets. In solid state sets that do this, it's usually a noisy transistor or a resistor that's noisy. Here's the chassis, just a little simple four transistor circuit with a high voltage audio output stage. I uh, had a little trouble getting the chassis out. You're supposed to remove the volume knob. The tuning knob remains captive to the cabinet. And then there's a little clip under here you have to pull back to release the chassis, but then the clip broke. That won't be a big deal, because once the chassis is in the cabinet, it can't go anywhere anyway with the back on. And once you pop the clip back a little bit, the chassis is supposed to slide out the back, but it didn't want to cooperate. I think the plastic got a little deformed or something and was keeping it in there. But we got it out. First thing I'm going to do is spray the volume control since it seemed to be messed up, and then we'll go from there. With the that's the volume all the way down, and we seem to have a loose connection somewhere. Behind the hacking, but had not said helping Trump was the motive. The outgoing Republican governor of North Carolina has just signed into law a bill stripping the incoming Democratic governor of some of his powers. Let's resolder the volume control. That'll be a good starting point. Okay, I resoldered the volume control and the areas around it. That's all the way down, totally silent like it should be. And when I bump on the board, no more in and out audio, so maybe that took care of that little problem. Mary, did you know? especially in the front end, go out of tolerance and either cause the mixer stage not to work at all or work very poorly. So I'm going to check that first. Okay, our volume control issue has started acting up again. 
And the pudding made of big. Oh. And the blue and silver... No, it's not going to act up. Typical. I warned all my friends and neighbors. Problem with the weak reception below 1290 was simply an alignment issue. I touched up our tremor here on the tuning condenser and things got much louder. Okay, I completely removed the old solder, flowed all fresh new solder on the volume control, and it seems to be acting right now. Time will tell if it will remain right. Pre-owned car, truck, go see it, my friends, up at the H&H &H Auto Sales. Now, okay, I'm going to say that's working pretty good. Now, the ultimate test is to put the chassis back in the cabinet because that's usually when they wait to really mess up is when you have the radio reassembled and then they'll start acting a fool again. Now I mentioned resistors going out of tolerance and causing problems in this particular chassis. I uh, pulled a couple out and replaced them just to prove my point that they do go up. Although these weren't up bad enough to cause the radio to severely malfunction, but it could happen. This is a 2.2 K ohm resistor. We're reading 3.3 K. So as you can tell, that one went up. Here's a 470 ohm that went up to 818 ohms. So we went ahead and replaced that. And some of the rest of them I checked on the board are up a little bit, but I'm not going to bother to replace them. The radio works fairly well as it is now. So basically what I had to do was Resolder this very vigorously and then I had to adjust the tremor on the tuning condenser it was backed way out usually they're not backed way out usually somebody gets a hold of them with the golden screwdriver and tightens them down and I did replace this 100 microfarad capacitor right here the old one looked a little bit puffy on the end so just went ahead and replaced that and just as I predicted it would happen, once I get it back together, it messes up again. And there's really not anything I can do about that at this point except replace the volume control and President maybe I'll dig around here later and find one, but I don't have access to one at the moment. But at least we know what the trouble is. Apparently me, apparently me heating it up was enough to make it work for a few minutes. Okay, we'll put the little GE on the back burner for now. We might revisit, revisit it again before the end of this video if I can find a volume control for it. But for now, let's check out radio number two. This is a Zenith. AM clock radio that's of course a tube set probably from the early 60s uh, as you can see the clock is running so that tells us it's getting AC let's turn it on and see if the radio does anything and of course it'll have to warm up since it's a tube set and I'm not seeing any vacuum bulb illumination in the radio so we probably have either a bad off on switch or an open tube filament so yeah there's indeed no vacuum bulb illumination so let's open it up and see what we're dealing with here's the chassis just a typical five tube 
super hit. There are several ways I could go about finding the open tube filament. The first and easiest way would be to pull each tube and test them on a tube tester and not only could I test for filament continuity, I could test the quality of the tube, but what if you're a newbie who doesn't have a have a tube tester? Well, you're still in luck. I've drawn out the filament string of this radio and the filament string in most uh, radios without a power transformer is wired in series just like an old string of Christmas tree lights if if one if one bulb in the Christmas tree light string burns out then none of the bulbs will light and you have to find out which bulb is is open well the same for a series string radio when one tube filament opens or anything in this circuit path opens then you get absolutely nothing now method number two of finding the open tube filament is to physically unplug each tube from the socket and use our own meter to test the filament pins which I have listed here on our rectifier tube it's pins six tap at four and pin three so we test across those pins and then on our 50C5 output tube it's three and four and on the other tubes it's pins three and four I just simply connect my own meter across those pins and if I didn't get a reading then we knew we, we'd know we'd have an open filament another way to do it would be to connect your uh, negative ohm meter lead to circuit ground and, and in this case it's the chassis since one side of the line is directly connected to the chassis and then we take our positive ohm meter lead and check here at pin 3 if we get a reading there move to pin 4 of the 12 AV6 into 12 pin 4 of the 12 BA6 into pin 3 and we keep moving back until we no longer got a reading for example if we get a reading on pin 3 of the 12 BE6 and move back to pin 4 and we don't get a reading then we know that the 12 BE6 has an open filament well if we get a reading there we just keep moving on back pin 4 of the 50C5 then to pin 3 then to pin 3 of the 35W4 then to pin 4 and then to pin 6 and if we're still getting a reading at pin 6 then you know we'll assume the switch is turned on we'll move back to the other side of the switch and if we lose our reading then we know the switch is open and if we still get a reading then we know we have an open power cord or a broken wire somewhere at the AC interlock and of course we know this is getting juiced because the clock is running another method is to set your multimeter to measure AC volts set it to about the 200 volt scale once again connect your negative lead to the chassis ground or circuit ground and take your positive lead and just touch the positive lead to each terminal on the tube looking for voltage and when you get to a point where you lose voltage then you know where the open is and yet another method is to take your AC voltmeter and measure the voltage across each tube filament. Now, when I was in electronics they taught us that you read maximum voltage across an open in a series circuit. So for example if the if the 50C5 tube was open when I place my AC voltmeter probes across pins 3 and 4 I should read the full line voltage of 120 volts let's see what method do I want to use here I think we're going to do the resistance method is then I'm going to connect my negative lead of my own meter to chassis to circuit ground which is the chassis in this case and I'll measure our resistance back through the tube string and I will report back when I find out where the trouble is okay 12 AV6 pin 3 that ties to chassis 0 ohms that's what I expect pin 4 come on make contact 12 ohms that's good alright let's move back to the 12B 
A6, pin 4. Good continuity there. Back to pin 3. Good continuity there. So everything up to that point's good. Now 12BE6, pin 3. Okay, pin 3. That's good. Now to pin 4. That's good. So we know everything up to the 12BE6 is good. Now let's move to pin 4 of the 50C5. Okay, that's good. Now back to pin 3 of the 50C5. That's good. Now let's move to pin 3 of the 35W4. Okay, pin 3. That's good. Alright, move to pin 4, which is the B plus tap on the filament. That's good. Now to pin 6. Well, what do you know? We get a complete, we have a complete circuit from here back to here, so that tells us the tube string, filament string is good. So the problem must be in the off on switch. Well, I don't know what happened there, but now we're getting bulb illumination. Perhaps the switch wasn't making good contact, and me flipping it back and forth a bunch of times uh, helped it reestablish contact. But at any rate, at least you know how to how to troubleshoot an open circuit in a filament string now. Okay, we have noise from the speaker. Let's connect an antenna and see if we get any kind of reception. Okay, the antenna's clipped in. I'm hearing promising noises. good. And I think for the heck of it, so I won't get any hate mail, I will go ahead and replace this capacitor. Okay, anyway, before I was interrupted, i just go ahead and replace this filter and this paper cap here and do a little routine maintenance and this thing ought to be good to go. Okay, we have the filter capacitors replaced and the other little paper cap replaced that I believe is nothing more than an AVC return cap. Sounds like we're working again. Just for fun, we're checking this old filter. It's an 80 microfarad and a 40 microfarad. The 80 microfarad's reading 32, so that's that's a good bit weak. And the 40 microfarad is reading 25, so even though it only had a little bit of hum, it would have gotten worse over time. So, might as well just go ahead and replace the capacitor with nice fresh ones and get zero hum. And wouldn't you know it, I put the thing back together and now it won't light up. This must be my day for radios that I choose to mess up after I put them back together again. Okay, I'm trying to fix this without pulling the chassis again. Alright, the AC comes in to pin 6 of the 35W4 tube, which is the filament. We have that on the meter. And then it comes out of, comes out on pin 3. And we have that on the meter, so that's means the 35W4 is good. We're just going to go through just like we did before. Only I'm going to use my test adapter to determine what tube is bad. Okay, we have a problem with the 12BA6. The AC comes in on pin 3, which is one end of the filament. It has 122 volts. It's moved to pin 4, which is the other end of the filament, and I have absolutely zero on it. So that means that the either the 12 the 12 BA6 looks like it has an open filament. 
and an ohm meter test proved that the 12BA6 had an open filament and it's quite possible that that tube might have been the cause of the initial no filament problem when we first started this video although it's rare sometimes these filaments will develop an intermittent connection and they'll work sometimes and then they'll break loose and not work again okay I found another 12BA6 in my junk stash and if it's good then we should have tube illumination let's plug it in and find out yes yes we have tube illumination I'm an operator in which we specialize in car wash complete detailing brake service very did you know that our radio is operating pretty good. Change admitted to killing nine people at an historic black church in Charleston, South Carolina. Mark Strassman is outside the federal co courthouse there. From the trial's opening moments, this guilty verdict was seen as a slam dunk for federal prosecutors. And Roof's jury talked it over for all of two hours before deciding he committed this lethal racist rampage. These images of Dylan Roof taking target practice with the eventual murder weapon helped convince jurors of his guilt. In closing arguments, federal prosecutor Nathan Williams called Roof a man of immense hatred who committed an act of tremendous cowardice, shooting them as they had their eyes closed in prayer. Prosecutors showed jurors Roof's videotaped confession to FBI agents. I went to the church in Charleston. Defense lawyer David Brock conceded to jurors that... Okay, enough of that. Oh, or so oh. It makes better sense to pay for yourself. Give B.J. Lewis and his agents a call at 601-485-7445. Contact B.J. Lewis Real Estate Company and discuss the possibilities. B.J. Lewis Real Estate Company is located 301 Russell Drive, across from New Safe Auto Rental. B.J. Lewis Real Estate Company is open from 10 a.m. until call 601-485-7445. Okay, that ought to do it. And in the past few minutes of glowing tubes that you've seen has been brought to you by Radio TV Phono Nut and this Zenith Radio. And by the way, you should be watching this video on the Radio TV Phono Nut channel. If you see it on another channel, then that's somebody else trying to pull some funny business. And I'd be really appreciative if you uh, let me know if you see any of that. Turn the light off. Reception is a little better when this overhead light's not on. Joy 1450. Joe Biden today at a memorial service at Ohio State University. The thing that I like most about John was he knew from his upbringing that ordinary Americans could do extraordinary things. John Glenn died last week at the age of 95. Dave Packer, ABC News. Breaking news and severe weather at once. 1390 AM and 93.1 FM. WMER. WMER.
among us. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, this is working pretty good. You could hear a few distant stations trying to creep in there. There's 910 with nothing on it for the month. This month to live. Time is something that cannot be bought. It cannot be wasted. me Okay, well that ought to take care of that one. We have a nice little Zenith clock radio from 1961. Do a little cleaning and polishing on it, and I'll repair this little crack in the case, and it should be good to go. Okay, now back to the GE. The, the volume control is behaving well right now. However, we're back to being dead below 1290. I'm not getting anything on 910 or 1010. It's like it's totally mute. Okay, I went back through and more thoroughly tested some of the resistors as in pulling the ones out that were giving me false readings by checking them in circuit. And as you can tell by the pile, there's a whole slew of them there that were out of tolerance, some two to three times higher than they should have been. And after replacing those, the radio perked up a good bit. Chris, if they flip one. About the hacking. This is CBS News. The evidence is now overwhelming. We have thousands. getting reception across the band now. Now we need to deal with this volume control issue. Okay, I removed the volume control and I re-soldered, or actually I added solder to where the terminals are riveted to the volume control. I tested it on the meter and it still seems to be a little wonky, so that control will probably eventually have to be replaced. But before we test it, you notice here we have some we have some nudity here, so we'll need to uh, unsolder this end of the power cord, and I'll slip a piece of heat shrink tubing on that. Now we don't we don't need too much copper showing here. Okay, we're back together. Let's turn it on and see if it's going to work properly or misbehave. cooking and going to parties. If you're pregnant this holiday season, to reduce some of the stress in your life. Stress can make you have headaches and trouble. Well, we're back to operating condition. Uh, how long it'll last, who knows, but it's been an interesting weather day, weather day today. It got up to about 80 degrees. It's supposed to storm tonight. And then tomorrow, we're supposed to have highs in the 30s and wind chills in the 20s. So what a weather pattern. Go from 80 one day to 30-something the next. Okay, I've turned off some of the interference-producing devices and 
I think that's WSM kind of fading out on us. Usually they come in really well. It's really about the only thing on AM that's worth listening to as far as at night. Everything else is your typical syndicated talk crap. And as far as locally, about all I listen to is 1290 that plays the oldies, R&B and soul oldies. WALT 910, it's a simulcast of talk format on 102.1, but right now about all we're getting is this. Don't know what their problem is. Premature birth, preeclampsia, birth 1010 WMOX, it was a top 40 station during the 60s and 70s, and they were country through the 80s and early 90s, and then they Flip to 100% talk in the mid 90s and haven't looked back. Broadcaster Craig Sager. There's WDIA 1070 out of Memphis. They play some pretty decent soul and R&B oldies, but they don't always come in that great. Your gift to children helps protect the press with them. For holiday lunch until December 23rd only. Holiday lunch is available Monday through Friday until December 23rd. For more information, go to Ruth Chris S.A. Regarded by Brewers. Tell him everybody I'm your cousin. 1290. I mentioned earlier, now this type of... This type of later soul and R and B, I'm not really that crazy about. In this uh, series, uh, 1390, the Southern Gospel Station, they they do a good job. Running a ball game right now, obviously. And here's 1450, the Urban Gospel Station, playing a. Uh, Grandma got run over by a reindeer again. I believe they were playing that earlier in this video. And we begged her not to go. That's pretty much our selection for AM in my area. Okay, so unless this volume control acts up again, I'm going to say this is fixed. Outfit. Something I like. Oh, it's lively. I want to be done. And before I go, a little preview of what's to come. I've gotten a couple of requests to do another anti Crosley video. And I'm not talking about the Powell Crosley era. I'm talking about the modern day Chinese junk Crosley era. So I'll, I'll try to get that done before Christmas. I, I know a lot of people enjoy those. And those anti Crosley videos also tick a lot of people off too and, and that just makes me happy okay anyway enough of that, enough about Crosley for right now but once again I'd like to thank the person who sent me these two radios you know who you are I certainly had fun getting them back going again and we learned a few troubleshooting techniques or at least I hope we did in the process that maybe we can apply to future projects so with that said, more to come later, and the next thing you see should be the anti-Crosley video.